Hello there, moin moin, ladies and gentlemen, Don Spector here today with another tip review and today I have for you the maximum that you can have, the Esla Setna Earfit Max. So yeah, we find out what Esla's latest and maybe greatest tip can or can't do. That's the packaging, that's how you would get them, you have a lot of marketing gibberish here, you have also said for true wireless, yep, and then some description at the back including the measurements of the tip, which is nice, so you can actually see how big it is. So yeah, and you actually get the tip in a packaging like this, so it's kind of cheap feeling, it's kind of but normal also for tips. You hope that, and then you get presented the tips. And yeah, these tips do definitely something that I have not seen other silicon tips do. They haven't measured the front. And of course, there are some marketing claims here that we will definitely discuss now. So again, as usual, I will just uh, directly read you the marketing claims and then later on in the review, we figure out if these are true or not. And actually, uh, the Zetna have three points that we probably need to discuss. And yeah, <clears throat> the first one being, straightness of the sound do its unique shape and improves the high frequency characteristics as well as the natural tone. Yep, so we'll be talking about that when we talk about sound later. And then the second claim is that makes it more comfortable to wear and minimizes ear irritations. Not only that, but also makes the ear tip more flexible and cleaner. Whatever that is supposed to mean, um, like no irritations, sure, maybe, but what is more flexible and cleaner? What, what does that even mean? I, I have no clue and I have to be talking about that. We talk about comfort and maybe additional factors later. And then the last claim is the thickness of the area which has direct contact with the ear is thinner, which reduces pressure and increases sound insulation. Again, like we have a few things that definitely do make sense here. Yeah, maybe the area that actually touches you here of these tips could be thinner, that's true. But how that's supposed to increase the sound insulation, I have no clue. And we talk about that later on as well. So, um, yeah, uh, the Max clock in at about, hmm, let's say 18 to $20 for two pairs or 27 to $30 for three pairs. That makes them rather expensive with like $9.5 per pair which in the grand scheme of things is kind of the Esla premium price. Um, yeah, so uh, price performance wise, right? The ST35 start at $3 per pair, Compli Foam about $5 to $8 per pair, Velvet tips $6.3 per pair, these normal Zetna ear fit tips about six and a half, normal spin fit about seven and a half, finally about eight, uh, soft, ear, liquid, uh, soft ears liquid silicone about nine, the X Elastex nine and a half, same as the Max, and last but not least, the Esla Crystal with $12.5 per pair. So yeah, they are definitely on the expensive side of things, but not the most expensive so far. So yeah, first, um, as usual, I'll be starting off with comfort and we talk about the available sizes. So what I have here, um, and I really get out of here, I have the short version, which it claims is for true wireless. Uh, I don't know why short tips are usually associated with two wireless. Like I have the feeling having a, a longer tip usually gives them a better uh, comfort and fit, but that's just my two cents here. So I um, yeah, I have the short version here, and I also come in a normal version, which is yes, yeah, as usual ear, to, ear tip size, about like a centimeter or so long. And yeah, um, generally they're available in SS, which is 10 and 10.3 uh, millimeters in width. Um, S 11.1 millimeters in width, width. MS 11.8 millimeter, M 12.5, ML 13.2, and L 13.9 millimeter. So this is a nice selection of sizes here, especially because you have a short version. So that means this basically covers all of your needs for basically all IEMs I can think of. Um, possibly maybe an LL would still be nicer, at like 14 and a half millimeters or so, but generally this is a nice selection of tips and yeah, that's pretty good. And um, yeah, so how comfortable is this actually? Uh, as you see, I have the short version and as I also said before, and I think, yeah, to my non-surprise, this actually is working well for me. I can wear the Max for a you know, few hours on end without feeling any discomfort if I choose the right eye, yeah. Um, so the first claim minimizes irritation. Well, I mean, 
can kind of not confirm. It's mostly like all of the other silicon tips, well, at least with better ones, but there's no really any irritation to speak of. It just really depends on the IEM and the nozzle you're using it with. And if you just choose the right IEM, yeah, it is comfortable and there's no irritation. But to claim that their irritation less is kind of not true. For instance, the LZA7 in particular, like to claim irritation less with this, it's just not the case. Like it inserts so deeply that even with this tip, I couldn't get this to fit as well as it probably should. So yeah. And then the second claim um, I said before, unfortunately cannot test. I can't measure the thickness of the material at its, uh, let me, let me just get a bit closer here. I think they mean probably like here at the front where it usually touches your ear. That's the thinnest. I can't test that. I don't have the tools to do that. Um, but I can tell you just from the looks, it doesn't seem to look thinner than the other parts. Like it maybe is a ever so light bit thinner, so it just stays a bit squishier. But it doesn't feel as bad if I just yeah, I, I touch it like that. Like this tip is definitely squishy but not on the squishier side of things. Like compared to the normal ASLA, um, the non-max or uh, the, not the crystal, just the standard ASLA earfit tips. Yeah, these are basically rock hard. So these definitely improve a lot over the normal ear tips there, um, but they're still not super soft. So generally, if you like softer ear tips, this will not be for you here. They are definitely still not as squishy as the others. Um, but generally, I think this is a fine tip in terms of comfort and I didn't have many problems with them and that's why in practice actually would put them definitely about the uh, uh, more than the crystal. Like we crystal are not that great in terms of comfort, um, but not as good as the XLastex from uh, yeah also Asna as well because yeah this memory silicone that they use here, which is technically not silicone but doesn't matter, is just working better. It just conforms to the air candle so well. Um, but yeah, it's then also sticky and I know some people don't like it. So on my personal ranking preference, um, most comfortable is Xelastex, followed by Cut Foam, followed by SpinFit, on the same level as Liquid Silicon, on the same level as Max, on the same level as D35, which in turn is slightly better than Velvet, which in turn is better than Tang Sankai, which in turn is better than SNS, which in turn is better than Crystal, and last but not least, finally, because I can't seem to get finally to fit me with any I am well. So next let's talk about isolation and yeah, one of the claims was also improves isolation and I just can't com like I just can't like this. This is not a bad isolating tip, but honestly the velvet, which I took a look, I think last week or two weeks ago, just isolates better to me. So that means in my artificial rating scale, because unfortunately I like measuring equipment to do the objective one, I think this exactly lands in the middle of this artificial zero to 10 scale. The zero is a really, really bad silicon tip, but it's super thin and flimsy. And 10 is a very good foam tip, but it's dense and just fits you very well. So exactly five in the middle here. Yeah, uh, even with the shorter tip here that usually allows for deep insertion, I would say possibly a 5.5 if I get them to fit just right. For instance, with the AJ07M, like that really then fills my ear basically perfectly. But even with that, I would say it's eh, just a 5.5. I still think the Velvet do a better job there. So yeah, next uh, let's talk about shaping sound. And again, subjective and objective here. And as usual in my reviews, I'll be starting off with subjective. And I said it already in the uh, Velvet tip review, the Velvet seemed to reduce upper treble a tad. And this, strangely enough, continues the same trend. Uh, we talk about this grill in the front later on, um, but I don't think it's doing to the grill. I think this could be just because the IEMs I tested them with, for instance, the AJ7M, the S12 or the Quintet, they need a bit of an insertion depth to get some resonance past 9K. And that means then, if you don't have the resonance, for instance, of this year, it generally tends to reduce, at least of these three IEMs, the upper treble and the upper to mid treble transitions a bit. Um, the measurements I took later on, uh, small spoiler, basically show the same thing. But yeah, this seems to dampen upper treble a bit. So yeah, so sub subjectively speaking, like that is, can be a good thing or a bad thing. I don't like it that much, but you may. So this could be an option, just subjectively. And objective, as I said, small spoiler. Yeah, I mean, um, I will show you measurements on the Quintet uh, and of the AJ7M. And I, again, I will have them with the fake pinner and without. 
Uh, reason for that being with the fake pinner, you get less insertion depth. That means there's possibly, oh, there's not possibly, there's more air in front of the, uh, the microphone, which is more realistic to how you would wear it in your real ear. But in both cases here that I have been hopefully just showing in the background, you can see kind of the same trend. The uh, max seem to dampen upper treble and upper to mid treble transitions a bit. It's not a lot, it's just a few decibels. And again, past 10k, like the coupler is not reliable. But yeah, to my ear, what we see here is kind of what it also sounds like. Um, uh, one thing I want to mention though, where I said the velvet tips, which unfortunately I do not have here at the moment, uh, also tend to make the bass impact go a bit down. The max do not. This is just affecting um, upper treble, but respectively mid to upper treble transition and nothing else. And then we talk about additional factors. And yeah, let's first talk about the mesh on the inside here. So you can see this is a mesh and it's supposed to protect the IEM from ear gunk and dirt and whatever. Uh, there's a small issue with this though, because this is actually like silicone. If you can see me squishing it, it gets a bit uh, more dense. And if I would stretch it, it gets less dense. So that means only on thin nozzle IEMs it will actually do a good job in protecting. On thicker nozzle IEMs, for instance, again, the AGR7M, it's just stretched too wide. So it doesn't really work in protecting the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the mesh in front of your IEM. Um, especially in the AGR7M with a 6.4 millimeter nozzle, yeah, there's huge holes in between and will only help you to basically keep, keep big dirt out of there. I don't know if that happens in your ear, like maybe a long hair or so, that might be protected, but nothing else. So that means uh, like I wouldn't really count on the mesh here and if you want some additional protection for the front of your IEM. Just maybe on small nozzle IEMs, but not on bigger ones, just doesn't work. And then um, yeah, let's talk about, um, yeah, cleaning the tip and maybe also uh, how long it probably lasts. So um, this pair I have not worn, I just used the other one, but I've been using this regularly since I think a few months since I got them and they still look as new to me. So they don't feel like they are squishier than before. They don't look like yellowed or anything. So it seems to be actually in good silicone. That means, yeah, it should last pretty long and nice bonus because it's absolutely not sticky, like this is definitely on the smoother side of things. Not super smooth, but smoother. Where was I? Uh, yeah, I wanted to say about a uh, cleaning. Uh, um, yeah, so generally these clean very easy because they are not so sticky, just ever so lightly sticky, but definitely more smooth. Um, yeah, you can just rinse them under warm water and they'll be fine. You can use soap with it. You should be able to use alcohol. Shouldn't be any issue. And yeah, they didn't decolor for me in the time. And yeah, they seem to be lasting. And that brings me to the conclusion. Yeah, uh, my title basically summons up the review. Are these maximum of anything? Of course, the implication being they're not. And yeah, while the max, I think are a good pair of tips with a good comfort and good selection of sizes, especially with the shorter version, which is exactly what I needed. I still struggle to justify the price of nine and a half dollars for a pair of tips that doesn't do anything unique. Like it is not shaped in a unique way. It's just a random, uh, like a random normal shape that all other tips have. It is not super wide in outlet. It's not super small in outlet. It's just a regular good silicone tip. Like it's just, I think overpriced for what you get. Um, so I will not recommend these, but again, I can see why these might work for you because yeah, as I said, they tend to dampen upper treble and mid to upper treble transitions. And if you want a slightly less spicy thing there, this might be a good physical tuning switch for that in quotes. Of course, yeah, they tend to do this. But again, it also depends here on the length of your ear canal. If you have a longer ear canal, it can maybe not do that as well. Because yeah, the coupler I have uh, generally tends to have a shorter ear canal as well. And my ear canal is also shorter. So my measurements and my subjective here might not be your own uh, ear canal. Um, there's a good chance it is kind of close enough because yeah, the 71 coupler is at least not super unrealistic, but it's not close enough like the newer couplers to give you a better uh, perception here. So yeah, they can do that, but don't need to. And that's it. Um, that's my review for the Max Tips. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, if you have recommendations, if you have criticisms or any other feedback, please leave a comment. And with this, Inspector out.